Good morning. All a bit different this morning, but there we are. We're all here, and you're welcome here and online to a time of worship at Castle Methodist Church in the, here in the centre of the city of Colchester. Last time I stood here was on Mothering Sunday and encouraging us to sing a silly farmyard song. This time I'm happy to stand here and welcome Sally Craver to lead our worship. The last time Sally was here, she was a local preacher in training. This time she is now fully accredited and we know that she will lead us in a meaningful Palm Sunday worship service. Looking ahead to that service, I think that this time we shall also have a good sing in traditional Methodist style. Welcome, Sally. The next day, the large crowd that had come from the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is the highest. Thank you. Now, how do I follow with that? Um, I think I'm going to say, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And let's start, let's start by singing a Charles Wesley famous hymn, probably his most famous, Love Divine or Love Excelling. And what I'd like us to do is just watch out in the last verse for the line, till we cast our crowns before thee. So let's stand as we're able and sing Love Divine or Love Excelling, which is 503 in Singing the Faith.
lost in wonder, love and praise. Let us now pray to our God. Lord God of mystery, which we cannot fathom, we honour your name. Heavenly King, we adore you and want to feel your presence with us today and always. Lord Jesus, who entered Jerusalem once in public and in triumph, you continually come quietly to our open hearts. We greet you and offer our lives to serve you. Holy Spirit, forever with us, guiding us to live out your witness, we praise you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, glory be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And let us confess our sins to God whose steadfast love endures forever. We confess that we have sinned, and although we'd like to deny it, we have forsaken you. We are horrified by the suffering we cause to you, ourselves, and the world you have created. Open the gates of your forgiveness and restore us into your love for the sake of Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord God helps us. We will not be disgraced. The Lord God helps us. Who can declare us guilty? Sisters and brothers, beyond the shadow of a doubt, your sins are forgiven. And let us say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing again, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And hopefully you all have palm crosses. So as we are welcoming Jesus, why don't we wave them as we sing? So that's Hosanna, 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 which is singing in the face, 263. And please stand if you're able to.
Great, you're coming forward without being asked. Come on. <laughs> Don't look so nervous. But I do always ask you to do something when I'm here, don't I? So we won't change that, will we? I was just going to ask you, because you probably know more about influencers than me. Do you know what an influencer is? Yeah? Do you want to share with us? No? Right, well, my, my idea of what an influencer is, is someone who goes on a social media channel. Now, I hope I've got it right. The latest one is TikTok, yeah? And that they do things which make you want to follow them and stay in touch with them. Is that right? Well, I'm going to say in Jesus' time, there, there were also influencers. Now, we've just heard, or we've just sung, Hosanna, and we heard Hosanna, which is a cry of praise. And this time, Hosanna was being said to Jesus as he came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And people were really, really, really pleased to see him they were going to have all their problems solved by Jesus, who entered like a king, riding on a donkey. So he was a peaceful king. So he came, but Jesus had a very concentrated face on him. He knew that he had to come to Jerusalem and he knew that later on in the week, though the crowds were really shouting, Hosanna, 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 by the end of the week, they would be crying, crucify, crucify, crucify. And what I want us to do is to think about when Pontius Pilate had a choice. He offered the crowds a choice of someone to be freed. Should it be Jesus or should it be a criminal who we knew who had killed things and his name was Baal Abbas? Okay? So, at first, the crowds thought, we want Jesus. So, what I'm going to do, and I might have to help us, or everyone to help us, is when I come up to this person with the stick, you've got to chant, Jesus, Jesus. Can you do that? Or, should I make it easier? Should we all chant, Jesus, 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 and then, this is the hard bit, when the stick is in front of you, and the people behind as well, you need to change your chant to Bar Abbas, Baracus. Or, should we make it easier, should we just say Bar? That's all right, we, we know who we're talking about if we say Bar. So, when the stick comes in front of you, and everyone on that side as well, you need to change your chant from Jesus to Bar. All right? And every time the stick comes in front of the next person, then you change from saying Jesus to Bar. Yeah? And then when the stick comes in front of you, you say, you change your chant from Jesus to Bar. And so on. All right, we got that? So we're all 
start off and please help us. So we'll start off saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now there's going to be a change. Ba. Now you carry on, Jesus. Ba. Right, more. It's your still Jesus. Keep your Jesus is up. Ba. Ba. It's changing, isn't it? Ba, 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 ba. So the chant has changed. So the crowds are now not calling for Jesus at all. They wanted Barabbas, didn't they? So Jesus would be go on and he would suffer during that week. But we know that the suffering in the end causes glory. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope it makes you think a little bit more about Palm Sunday and the rest of the Easter week. So I would like to say a prayer for you all now. Lord God, thank you for young people and thank you particularly for these young people. Thank you that they contribute to church life. Thank you that they know that you love them, each, everyone, so, so much. Please bless them. Amen. All right, I'll let you go now. <laughs> Thank you. And we sing again, Ride on, ride on in majesty, which is Sin in the Faith 265. And if you want to carry on waving, you can. It's totally up to you. So please stand if you're able while we sing together, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
And now we'll have our readings. Our Old Testament reading is taken from Psalms 118, verses 1 to 2, and verses 19 to 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is a day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession, and up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 12. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you you are doing this, tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks over it and spread them on the road, while others spread branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, 
he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thanks be to God. Thank you for those readings. And now we sing again. Um, we're going to sing quite a long hymn. So we're going to just sing verses 1, 3, 5 and 7. So it's Singing the Faith 277, My Song is Love Unknown. Will you pray with me? May the words on my mouth and the meditation in all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So if we haven't worked it out yet, Today is Palm Sunday, and we concentrate about Jesus' triumphal entrance into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, a low-status animal, a humble beast of burden. On the screen uh, is a piece of art, which is a part of the Methodist Modern Art Collection. It's a stencil using natural pigments and ink on paper, and it's by Sadio Wantaby, and it's called Christ Enters Jerusalem. I wonder what your feelings are 
and your thoughts are about this painting. What immediately struck me is that it's a red background. Why did he choose a red background? And although, if you look carefully, we can see coats and palm leaves on the ground, what about the expression on Christ's face? And indeed, the faces of the followers and crowds. What do they look like? What story are they telling? Um, nowadays, in the West, the donkey is a beast of character and of fun. And there's even songs about donkeys. Now, my son is called Dominic, and we tease him every single Christmas time about a song, a Christmas song called Dominic the Italian Chris Christmas Donkey, and it's by Louis Monti. Um, I did want to play you a little clip, but I, I, I'll get you to look it up if you want when, when you get home. Um, it is very funny and it, the noises certainly will make you chuckle. But the question I want to ask, what was the statement Jesus was making by choosing to enter into Jerusalem on a colt? We are bound to say that Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was an act of supreme courage. Again, the piece of art, the expression on Christ's face to me, it looks so determined and focused. It was the courage of Jesus the man who sees with complete clarity the terrible things ahead and who deliberately, of set of purpose, and having counted the cost, goes on. That is the courage of Jesus when he enters Jerusalem. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he used the methods of action that many of the prophets of Israel had used before. He didn't enter the city as a triumphant general high upon a horse, but chose to come on a young she-ass, which no one had ridden before. And it was a deliberate claim to be a king. And no doubt, Jesus, who we know was well-versed in scripture, was remembering the prophecies of Zechariah, Lo, your king comes to you, triumph and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. But at the same time, it was a claim to be a different type of king. It was on the donkey of peace and not on the horse of war, that Jesus, the son of the King David, came into Jerusalem on the day we now call Palm Sunday. He came deliberately refusing the role of warrior Messiah and claiming to be the Prince of Peace. And the crowds outside of Jerusalem were profoundly moved by seeing Jesus for the first time riding a donkey. And they responded by taking their cloaks off and laying them on the ground or spreading out leafy branches from the fields. Cloaks were status symbols. They communicated that a person has an identity and an authority. And in our first hymn we sang today, Love Divine or Love at Selling, by Charles Wesley, the line in the third verse of the hymn, 
cast out crowns before these speaks of a similar idea. Today we use status symbols to let people know that we are valuable and worth their attention. But when it comes to God, they are redundant because God knows our true selves and God's love will not, it's not bound by our own human measure of worth. And it's interesting, as the passion story moves forwards, the crowds which at first shouted Hosanna and quoted line to line psalms like um, the psalm we heard this morning, <laughs> Psalm 18, where it says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the people who threw down their objects of status like cloaks and threw down branches in adoration and praise of the son of David, the recognised Messiah, they would soon change their tune. That same crowd would have a change of heart by the end of the Holy Week and their Hosanna chants would change to crucify him. And this point is sharply captured by the Samuel Crossman's famous Passion Time hymn, My Song is Love Unknown, which, if you remember, we've just sung. And I just wanted to say again the lines of the third verse, which says... Sometimes we through his way, his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, Hosanna to our King. Then crucify is all our breath, and for his death we first and cry. And after this triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, the first place Jesus chose to go with his disciples was to the temple to pray. Jesus knew what a terrible ordeal lay ahead of him, but he chose to pray in the temple. Now, as we continue through Holy Week, journeying with Jesus to Easter, let us remember why Jesus came to earth, lived as a human, was crucified and then resurrected. It was so that we could all know what true love means. God loves us all so much that he was prepared to demonstrate this love by his beloved son dying on the cross. And let us remember that it took tremendous courage to make his last entry into Jerusalem, where Jesus was welcomed as a king. That the same crowd would turn against Jesus, as perhaps Jesus was not the king they expected. And today, we are all called to be followers of Christ, to be brave and courageous, yet humble and meek, but with the reassurance knowing that we are loved by God. Let our minds, hearts and souls not be distracted by material position, possessions, uh, as the hymn Love Divine tells us, let's cast out our crowns and instead be filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to live our lives as worship to God through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. May we always have the courage to acknowledge ourselves as Jesus' disciples and to live out our lives on earth by loving our God and loving each other and advancing God's kingdom on earth by acts of kindness and having the same values as Jesus. So, let us have the confidence to shout Hosanna to Jesus 
every single day. Amen. Thanks be to God for his words. And we sing again, All my hope on God is founded, singing the faith 455. And I just wonder whether it would be nice to remain seated and just reflect on God's words. Will you pray with me again? This time we have a bid and response. So when I say, save us, O Lord, could you please reply, for your mercy is great. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Jesus suffered death and rose to glory for the life of the world. Let us lift our hearts in thanks to God and pray for the care of the world, saying, Save us, O God, for your mercy is great. 
Holy God, your Son humbled himself even to death to show us the power of loving service. Guide those holding positions of power that their decisions give rise to the mutual flourishing of the world you so love. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Healing God, your son is betrayed and crucified in our violent world each day. Raise us to a new and rightly ordered world through the reconciling love of Christ, where all victims of violence and persecution, shame or terror may stand together with you in peace. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Forsaken God, as your Son suffered his cruel death on the cross, darkness covered the whole land. Enlighten us to care for your creation. Awaken us from our denials and abuse and help us to alleviate its suffering. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Grieving God, your Son consoles others in life and in death. We pray for all those who are distressed, broken or sorrowful, that together with Christ in his suffering, we may be healed and raised in you. Save us, O God, for your mercy is great. An eternal God, your Son was lovingly cared for as he was laid to rest in a tomb. Remember before you those who have died, and ask you to enfold them in your love, that they may rest and rise with Christ forever in his light, and care for those who grieve their losses and comfort them. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We ask all of these prayers in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, as we journey with Jesus through Holy Week and we learn more about you, let us use these gifts and all of our talents for your glory. Amen. We sing our final hymn, uh, a beautiful hymn, which I know, as in true Methodist style, we, we, we will sing and enjoy the closeness of the words and reminding us of the life of Jesus and beyond. So it's uh, meekness and majesty, which is singing the face 362 um, and please stand if you're able to.
Son, and the Holy Spirit.